With me tonight, Jason Johnson, a politics and journalism professor at Morgan State University. He is also an MSNBC political contributor and ESPN's Pablo Torre, host of the podcast Pablo Torre Finds Out from Meadowlark Media. He's also a Harvard University alumni. So I turn to you first. What is your reaction to her resignation and the allegations of plagiarism? Yeah, I think the plagiarism stuff, uh, it's real. It amounts to academic misconduct. I think we can parse whether this is a capital crime or clo closer to a misdemeanor. I, I lean towards nothing that would suggest that this alone would have been enough to force a resignation of a Harvard president. But I do believe that when you combine it with a performance on Capitol Hill that was disastrous stuff, like actually, um, a, a failure of leadership from the perspective of how do you articulate a complicated subject that plagues every university and has forever, the trade-off between speech and safety. At that point, well, I, I think this gave the Harvard University Board of Overseers, the Harvard Corporation, a bit of a red herring to say, maybe the academic stuff is unsustainable, but in reality, what we're really worried about is the fact that we don't have faith in her ability to lead us through a wartime presidency with the war being the culture war for all of the reasons that are gross and disgusting and unfair to her as a black woman, the first, of course, in the history of this university. It's a sad day for the university, right? Oh, absolutely. A 400-year-old university to be in this. Jason, you work on a college campus every day. What do you make of all of this? I think it's ridiculous. And I think that whoever at Harvard advised or suggested or demanded that Claudine Gay go to a bad faith uh, uh, a committee hearing by Republicans should be fired before her. This was all a sham. Anyone who knows these kinds of hearings put together by Republicans is a sham. So to blame somebody for going to a sham hearing and performing poorly when there was no way you could necessarily perform well is part of the problem. I think Harvard, despite being an institution, obviously there's plenty of bright people there, no question about Harvard's integrity. But it is very clear that they've allowed themselves to be manipulated. And by firing or forcing or encouraging their president to step down, they have allowed themselves to be used in an idiotic culture war, and Harvard won't be the last place that's affected. And I, I have to say this, Stephanie, because it's really important. When I say bad faith, it's not just because the Republicans don't really care about anti-Semitism. Harvard is not an indicator as to how every university in this country works. If they really cared about the temperature of what was happening on campus, there's plenty of other places they can go. There's a University of Akron and Ohio and Vanderbilt and community colleges, but they didn't care about that. What they wanted was to get this black woman out at Harvard University. Fine, but put the, put the, put the hearing aside, right? The, the hearing was difficult to watch, but it seems as though it's almost like on the plagiarism thing, they've got her on a technicality, right? And, and it's not necessarily the Harvard board or, or the donors. It was the Crimson, the student paper, that actually put an op-ed out yesterday that I read. And this is, and the op-ed was by a student that's on the Honor Council that said, listen, when students are found responsible for multiple instances of inadequate citation, they're suspended for an entire academic year. And the student argued that the, the standard for students should be the same standard for professors, for, for the faculty. There's an, is the, what is your take on the argument they're making that there has to be a standard for students? I, I mean, I have been forced, I've dealt with plagiarism with one of my children. A, a, and and mm -hmm. if you're going to choose a university or president who doesn't necessarily have a business background, who doesn't necessarily have a background, you know, testifying before Congress, which is obviously really difficult, they have to have a flawless academic record. So, Stephanie, this is this is my reaction to that. First off, I need everybody to understand this because maybe not everybody in the audience understands. When most people hear plagiarism, they think you stole somebody else's ideas, right? But plagiarism within academic circles can also mean incorrectly citing things. That doesn't mean the same thing. An incorrect citation is just that. It could mean that you put Joe Jenkins wrote this instead of Joe Smith. It could be I put the parentheses here instead of parentheses there. I know. I've written an entire dissertation. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think 
I or anybody else, and certainly not a bunch of bad faith Republicans and right wingers like Chris but, Rufo, but, should be in a position of second guessing how Harvard evaluated her up until that point. If they didn't think it was a big deal until the national right got involved, I don't see how it's a magically big deal now. I, I'm sorry, that to me, as an academic who has seen people and caught people and failed people for plagiarism, that alone to me is not enough. And the rest of it, I think, is just bad faith nonsense. But Pablo, can two things be true? Can you have bad faith actors going after Harvard's president or MIT's president or Penn's president for their own nefarious reasons and at the same time have a plagiarism problem? Yes, and I, I, I look, I, I, I am deeply sympathetic towards somebody in Claudine Gay who yeah. is a serious academic. She's for been real. held up as a token, as a DEI avatar in a way that's deeply offensive and insulting to her actual scholarship record. Mm -hmm. That does not mean that that record also contains academic misconduct by the book. And so look, do I think again that that alone is enough to oust her as president? But no, I don't think that. I do think though that the original sin here is her performance in front of Congress. And I agree with Jason that it was a deeply bad faith proceeding, but at the same time, you're the president of the university. And I think the practical question of what your job is in 2024 now is an incredibly different one. Okay, then to that very point, right? You've got the far right saying, we're going after diversity and inclusion, right? Is this not about diversity and inclusion, but more what is the role of a university president? You're, right, you're Harvard's president. You've got to oversee a $70 billion endowment. You're running a giant institution. It's a business. Are you setting this person up to fail? Yes, and, and I think that when we look towards who the next president is going to be of this university and any other, part of the job description is going to be, how do you talk in front of a congressional hearing which is about grandstanding and not articulating a policy by the book. And also, how do you raise money in a climate in which people are asking you really hard questions about what qualifies as protected speech when student safety is also at issue? By the way, I'll, I'll just note, this trade-off between safety and speech is a problem that the Supreme Court wrestles with, that no platform in Silicon Valley has ever figured out. This is incredibly difficult. And it's up to somebody who can be politically savvy in front of that audience, which is both Congress people and America, about these issues unless you plan to withdraw from the general public discourse, which I believe at this point is untenable. I think it was actually overdue in a very cynical way, I'm saying this, it was overdue that Bud Light got dragged into the culture war before Harvard University did. And now they're here and they're not going away. And so how do you deal with it? That's a job for a different kind of academic, for better and certainly for worse. Jason, last point to you. That is absolutely wrong. First and foremost, the questions are only going to be asked of women and people of color. So if you say that the next president has to be prepared to answer how many bubbles are found in a, in a, in a bar of soap, yeah, but Penn's you're basically saying did we'll too, never pick And the MIT president did too. I think it's... So, I so think no, it's coming for think everybody. Sorry. I think the strongest and best thing for an institution to do would be to not play the game and select someone that they think is best, not someone who is prepared to answer bad faith questions from a, from from a, a entire political party that is only interested in taking people out and not in building up institutions.